Hi everyone, happy Wednesday. This week I'm in the mood to be playful with my painting process. I want to play with colors I don't usually use. I'm also going to be using circles, which is something I use a lot, but um, it is my favorite shape and it's the one that I'm most drawn to. I was once asked if I would consider making some art using squares once in a while and I have done that and I like it. I don't, it's just not my preference, I guess it's, just, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I do prefer circles and so I want to use circles in a different way. I am not going to create neurographic art, which I do a lot when I use circles, but I'm going to explore colors and I have also double taped my paper on the plexiglass that I'm using. And I double taped it so that at one point I can take part of the tape off and I can add an, um, a border around what I'm going to be painting. So stay tuned. You'll see what I mean when I'm done. But um, I double taped it so that I can pull part of the tape off, add some more paint, and then remove the tape at the very end, the, the final tape at the very end when I feel done. And it'll create a little bit like a, a double frame around my painting. Or at least that's the hope. We'll see. <laughs> I've started my painting process by adding a very light wash of some blue, a little bit of turquoise, and some carmine nacaret. And I know these colors typically go really well together. I'm creating, like I said, a very light wash. The plan is that once I'm done applying the colors or I'm satisfied applying the colors that I'm going to be using, I'm going to add some salt and of course that's going to create some interesting textures once the paper dries. And then over that background I'm going to start creating my circles and add some more shapes. When I said I was going to be using some colors that I'm not used to working, I'm going to add those a little bit later. And I'm going to try to bring in some greens. Green is my absolute favorite color. And even though I love it, I very rarely work with it. So I want to experiment today with this painting process to see if there are ways that I can incorporate green in a painting in a way that I will also love. Oh wow, the salt really did create some really beautiful textures over that background. And I'm almost feeling deterred <laughs> from painting over it, but I'm sort of on a mission to create a painting using some green and I have some ideas on how I could have used it otherwise, but I really want to stick to my plan, I guess, my quote unquote plan. <laughs> <laughs> my plans are never really set in stone um, but I, I have an idea in mind and I, I kind of just want to flow with that and of course as I'm going along things can change along the way um, but we'll see we'll see how this develops as it goes So I'm starting to add some color to my circles and as I'm doing this I want to try to keep my layers of color relatively light so you can still see underneath um, that layer of color the textures that were left by the initial layer in the salt. Um, but of course some of that texture is going to disappear and it, it probably isn't all that bad of an idea because it can make for a very busy background. And so I want to try and subdue or, or make the, that background a little bit more subtle while making some of that texture stand out through my shapes. Thank you. 
As I'm continuing to work on creating more circles and letting my little painting develop slowly but surely, I am going to veer off topic for just a little bit to talk about something that I've noticed has been happening with me in recent weeks and um, maybe to share my experience with you in the hopes that it might be helpful somehow. As many of you know, mental health is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. And that stems probably more so from the fact that I have had my own struggles with mental health, mainly with depression and probably also with anxiety or the collie wobbles. <laughs> wink, wink. Um, yeah, I have had struggles with anxiety and depression for I would say a good part of my life and this started when I was a teenager and it's been kind of an up and down journey um, through which I have learned a lot and I'm happy to say that in um, recent years I've been doing very well. I've had a chance to develop a lot of skills to help me manage my thoughts and to help me manage my feelings and um, my anxiety and my depression have, I wouldn't say completely gone away. I sometimes do feel anxious, um, mostly when I'm feeling very stressed or tired. But recently I noticed that my mood was starting to go down and when I was evaluating everything that was going on in my own personal life, of course, you know, me dealing with pain, I've been, I've been managing some physical pain for a while now and that at some point can start to bring a person down because it's, um, it feels like an uphill battle at times and you never really feel sure if or when the pain is actually ever going to really go away. So I just kind of try to take it day by day and, you know, not focus on the pain itself, but trying to focus on things I can do that can actually make me feel better. So I noticed that my mood had been shifting. I'm sure the pain had something to do with that, but I also realized that over the last few months, more so than I used to before, I've been reading the newspaper. <laughs> and as I'm sure you know, reading uh, the newspaper or watching the news, I don't have cable, so I don't typically watch um, cable news, but I read or I was reading the newspaper quite a bit. And it's important to feel... Um, connected to what's going on in the world and, and I feel that it is important to be aware of events that are happening in the world but I'm also a very empathic person and I have a very hard time seeing some of the things happening in our world and not being affected by that. So I realized that maybe you know me starting my day by reading the newspaper or ending my day right before bed um, by reading the newspaper again might not have been actually helping me <laughs> and it's funny because this is something I knew and it's something that for years I wasn't reading the newspaper I had sort of boycotted the news not to lay, lend a blind eye to things that are happening in the world. I'm very aware of the things that are happening in the world and I feel like if there are things that are very important for me to know, someone somewhere is usually going to share that information with me. But the constant 
negative news and not just negative news I, I feel like there's a lot of fear mongering in the news um, I feel like that's really been affecting my mood and so I decided a little while ago that I was not going to do that anymore and I'm not even going to say surprisingly because it's not surprising because I've seen this happen before I'm starting to feel better my mood is starting to lift because instead of focusing on the negative things that are happening in our world that I really don't have a whole lot of power over, I'm focusing on the present moment and living my life and doing the things that I can do in my own way to make the world a better place. You know, Gandhi said, be the change you wish to see in the world. And I think that's the surest way for us to all contribute to making this world a more peaceful, loving and enjoyable place to be but sometimes it gets really overwhelming when you see everything that's happening and you care about people and you care about the environment and you care about the world it gets really overwhelming to see everything that's happening so for me it's been really good to take a step away from that to sort of refocus my energy and attention on my own life and things that are going on in my present moment and in my current environment and it really seems to be helping shift my mood and this is not like I said this is not something that's new to me I, I did this before in the past and I went years and years and years without you know reading the newspaper or watching the news and like I said I always would find out anything that I really needed to know I would always find out and then the other stuff that I really had absolutely no control over, then I could not have that have an influence in my present day moment. So anyway, just a, <laughs> a little tidbit of advice or not really advice, I guess I share these things with you because when I find that there's something that helps me improve my mood or shift uh, my focus away from energy that tends to bring me down or um, that helps elevate my anxiety then I feel like it, it's good to share this kind of stuff because maybe someone else could benefit from it so anyway that's all it is I'm not wanting to tell you how to live your life I think you know there are people many people who read the news watch the news and are not as affected by it but for me <laughs> it's definitely not an easy thing to accomplish so Maybe if someone else out there is more like me and gets more affected by things that they read and see in social media or in the news or wherever, then sometimes it's good to go on a bit of a diet from those things and it can be very helpful. <laughs> and <laughs> with that, I'll, I'll stop talking about that and we'll move on to the painting again. I mentioned earlier that I wanted to add some green to my painting because I think purple and green are complementary colors and they tend to look very, um, they go very well together. And so I wanted to do that, but I was feeling a little daunted by the idea of adding some pure green. So instead I decided to go about it in a bit of a more subtle way by starting to add the magic green. So this color looks a little bit more like a very light mint green and when it catches the light a certain way it does have a little bit more of a greenish hue and so I thought it would be interesting to start by doing that and then see how I felt. I'm liking the magic green but I'm not as wowed as I hoped I would be at this point. So I'm just going to move on to working with my fountain pen for a little bit and add some little subtle details using some stippling and then I'll probably bring in my fine tip pen and add some vertical lines here and there just to sort of give me a chance to really focus on being in this moment and not worrying about what to do next. And when I add simple little details like this, I really... Um, sort of 
shut that little critical voice inside my head that tells me that it's not looking good and that I should give up and all this stuff, that really gets sort of pushed aside when I'm starting to really focus on being in this present moment right this minute, just doing something as simple as adding some stippling. And doing so, just focusing on doing the thing that I'm doing right now, somehow helps bring me to a point of inspiration for the next thing I'll want to do. But I need to let that sort of play out in whatever way it needs to play out. And I can't force things. And that's what I love about the intuitive painting process. I let my my intuition be the guide. And I never or try to never force anything uh, into my painting. Sometimes when I try to force something or, or doing something in my painting process, it often doesn't work out. And then all it does is contribute, <laughs> contribute to more frustration. And that's the last thing I want at this point. This is supposed to be a fun process for me. I want to be experimenting with color and I want to bring in green. The magic green is great but it's not exactly where I want to be just yet. So I'm gonna just take it one little step at a time and see how it keeps developing. I've taken out my little tin box of um, CSY gallery paints and as you can see in this little tin box there are many different little metallic greens and I really ultimately want to add those but I'm feeling daunted. (laughs) I don't know what it is. I'm really struggling. I'm afraid as much as I love green I'm, I'm afraid to use it somehow. So I'm going to start with a color that feels less daunting because it's a little bit more like gold and I forget the name of this color. Let's see. It is Inca Gold and it's sort of a beautiful orangey gold which orange itself I find looks usually very very nice with blues and purples and I actually really like how it looks. Um, around this circle that I'm adding it on right now so (laughs) I'm happy I made that decision so I'm just kind of going with the flow this is where my intuition told me to go because I wasn't really feeling ready to add more green and I'm doing I guess what feels right to me at this point and as I go along I will just feel my way through it and when it feels right I'll add more green And if for whatever reason it never feels right, then I guess I won't. But (laughs) I'm really hoping I can get myself to that point.
Okay, I finally figured out a way that I can add a little bit more green without traumatizing myself. <laughs> I, I'm going to start by adding this uh, color called apple green. It's a little bit brighter and more um, greenish <laughs> in hue than the tropical sunrise magic green and so I think it's a good way for me to like sort of get my feet wet <laughs> and add a little bit more of that greenish color into my painting without again going too drastic and right now I'm um, I, I think this was the right decision I, I'm feeling really good about it and I I'm gonna add a little bit more of it here and there in the painting I still want more green in my painting and I think I figured out exactly where I can put it. <laughs> I'm feeling a little shy uh, in putting it in the center of my painting so I'm going to try to put it around my painting and I'm going to mix it with some blue hopefully make it a little bit more subtle and um, yeah so I'm removing that second layer of tape I was telling you about that created sort of like the the second frame around my painting and I'm going to add some color to it very shortly and hopefully this is going to help me feel like I'm finally you know <laughs> getting as much green in my painting as I was hoping to get in there. So I don't have a lot of greens in my palette, but I do have a few and I decided to add the green gold. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right choice. It's a bit bold. Um, so I'm trying to sort of tone it down a little bit with some blue. Um, but I do like how it plays against the purple and blues that are in the painting so far. And what I'm thinking is that this move might have actually been the thing I needed to do in order to get the courage to add some more green inside the painting and that's what I'm going to do next. Okay well maybe I'll take off the rest of the tape first <laughs> just to make sure that I don't like the painting so much at this point that I'd like to leave it as it is and then I'll reassess but I really do think that green on the border is now taking too much attention and without adding some of it to the, the painting itself, it's probably not going to work because there's, it's, it doesn't seem very cohesive. So there, 
decision made, I will add some of that green gold to some of the circles in my painting and then I'll be ready to call my painting complete. Et voila! The green is added and it now seems to all fit together so much more beautifully. It's funny how I can love the colors so much and then at the same time still find it challenging to work with. And this is definitely a challenge I'm glad I worked on overcoming because the addition of that green gold inside the painting as well as around the painting really seems to pull everything together. Well, at least for me it does. I really had a lot of fun with this little challenge and I hope you're feeling inspired to pick some color you're having a challenge with and give it one more try. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!